Okay, this tutorial starts out section 4.5, that's multiplication and division of rational expressions. And I'm going to probably split this into two parts, uh, multiplying and dividing, uh, being that we're going to have to look specifically at uh, some of the restrictions that go with this as well. So I'm going to start with multiplying. And what you do specifically is before you start any work, you must factor completely everything first. Once you've met factored out everything completely first, then you can start doing your reducing from your numerators and denominators uh, when you're doing that, specifically in uh, multiplication. If you have a division question, you're going to have to flip over uh, because if you remember from fraction rules, uh, dividing or uh, multiplying is the sa uh, same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal is dividing. So we're going to start with this example here that you see and we're going to factor this out. So I'm going to factor out, well, there's two x's in there, so that's 3 times 2 x's over x plus 3, multiplied by, now if I use my skills with trinomials, I know that this is x plus 3 times x plus 2. Two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to 5, and this is just 3 times 3 times x. So now that I've factored everything completely, I can start canceling. Well, I can cancel a 3 and an x from there and there. Remember, it has to be a numerator and a denominator. And then I can cancel this one out as well. And we look at that, and I get x times x plus 2 over 3. So if I simplify that, that's x squared plus 2x over 3 if you like. You can leave it in this form as well. I have no problems with that and I think that's what your book does mainly. Now we have to look at restrictions. And what we have to do is we have to go back to the beginning when we're looking at restrictions here specifically. Because if we look here, we don't want this fraction to, we don't want this denominator to be 0 and we don't want this denominator to be 0. Okay? So we can have x plus 3 cannot equal 0, and 9x cannot equal 0. So solve for x in both cases. x cannot equal negative 3, and x cannot equal 0. There's our two restrictions. With multiplying, restrictions are easier because you just simply look at the beginning of all the factored factors and find where uh, the x or the denominator cannot equal 0. So let's take a look at some more examples here. I'm just going to flip over and make sure that's in my field of view. Okay, so let's do some reducings here with multiplication. Let's have an example that would look like this. Say we had x squared <coughs> minus 3x plus 2 all over um, x squared plus 6x plus 9 multiplied by x squared minus 9 over 2x minus 4. Okay, so in our case, what we have to do is completely factor first. That's the first step again. So two numbers that multiply to 2 and add to negative 3 would be negative 2 and negative 1. Two numbers that multiply to 9 and add to 6, 3 and 3, both since they're all positive. And here we have a difference of squares, x plus 3 times x minus 3. And here we have a common factor of 2, so x minus 2. So I can take a look at my restrictions here now that I've factored, and that's what I commonly do. Because it's multiplying, we don't want, we can look at the restrictions here on the side. x plus 3 cannot equal 0, and x minus 2 cannot equal 0. So our two restrictions are x cannot equal 3, negative, and x cannot equal 2. There's our two restrictions that we get from this. Uh, step. Now we can do some cancelling here. 
So cancel a denominator with a numerator wherever possible. Okay, these are not complete opposites of each other. You cannot multiply by negative 1 and cancel because if I were to do that, I'd get negative x minus 3, which wouldn't be the same as that. So then I'm just going to write this out. x minus 1 times x minus 3 all over 2 times x plus 3. And that's our simplified expression. And that's how I would leave it in that case, unless it tells you to expand it out in the book. And, that's a, and our restrictions are x cannot equal 3 and x cannot equal 2. Okay, we have enough time, I think. Do a couple more. Yes, we do. I'm just going to move this up. Slide this over a bit. Okay, so let's take a look at another example here. And let's look at a, an example that would look... Um, let's go with this one here. x squared minus 4 over 2x plus 11x plus 5 multiplied by, in our case here, x squared plus 2x minus 15 and here we have x squared minus x minus 6. So we can see we're going to have to use decomposition on that bottom one because it's got a 2x squared here. Sorry, copying it down. So if I were to do that, this would be x plus 2 times x minus 2 because that's the difference of squares. And two numbers that would multiply, we have to decompose to 10 and add to 11. That would be 10 and 1, so I can go 2x squared plus 10x, x plus 5, plus x plus 5. So I'm de using decomposition there. Here I can use trinomial rules. Multiply to negative 15, add to positive 2. That would be 5 and negative 3. And here, same thing. x minus 3, x plus 2. So I have to do some decomposing of this still. Um, so I'm just going to rewrite that and decompose this to take out 2x here to give me x plus 5 and plus 1 times x plus 5. So you can see that's going to be 2x plus 1 times x plus 5. And this is going to be the same as we had here. Okay, now that I'm here, I'm going to apply my restrictions. This is going to be 2x plus 1 times x plus 5 here when I reduce it down to there. So my restrictions are all on the bottom here. x cannot equal negative 2. x cannot equal 3. That's from those two. And x cannot equal negative 5. And x cannot equal negative 1 half as well. There's four restrictions there. So now that I've applied my restrictions, I can do the canceling here. So I can cancel this one. Remember that this here is just this form. There. This one here. This one here. So what I have left is x minus 2 all over 2x plus 1 and the restrictions are here. x cannot equal negative 2, x cannot equal 3, x cannot equal negative 5, and x cannot equal negative 1 half. And that is some examples of multiplication. Uh, we're going to go on to division in our second part in our next tutorial.